In this demonstration video, we will show how to create a boundary conditions coverage, assign values to boundary conditions arcs, and create monitor lines. First, we'll create a boundary conditions coverage. This is done by right-clicking on map data and selecting new coverage. Let's specify the type to be boundary conditions. Since this simulation represents our 100-year event, we'll name the coverage BC 100-year. Next, we'll create the upstream and downstream boundary conditions arcs. Recall that these boundary condition arcs should be located far enough upstream and downstream of the area of interest to allow for the natural distribution of flow. We determined these locations previously when we created our mesh generator coverage. Let's turn on the mesh generator coverage and use it as a guide while creating the boundary conditions arcs. To create boundary conditions arcs, we'll select the Create Feature Arc tool. These arcs should span the entire floodplain and be located just outside the extents of our mesh. By default, the arcs we just created are set as wall boundary type. Using the Select Feature Arc tool, let's double-click on the upstream arc. This will open the SRH2D Assign BC dialog. Now we'll change the BC type to Inlet Q and set the constant Q to 35,000 CFS. This represents our 100-year flood event. Now, let's double-click on the downstream boundary conditions arc. Set the type to Exit H and specify a constant water surface elevation of 889 feet. This value represents normal depth at the boundary. In the exercise, you will get the chance to compute normal depth using the Channel Calculator tool. Next, we'll create a new coverage and assign it as a monitor type coverage. A monitor coverage is used to extract discharge, water surface elevation, and velocity values from our simulation. Using the Create Feature Arc tool, we'll now create three arcs one each near the upstream and downstream boundaries, and one near the bridge. Next, using the Create Feature Point tool, we'll create a few monitor points. We've now created the coverages that could be used to create an SRH2D simulation, as we did in a previous exercise. This concludes our demonstration on boundary conditions and monitor features. You will complete similar steps as you do the last exercise for this lesson.